everyone, welcome. This is Mark Aura. welcome back to another modding tutorial. Today we are going to be adding an item to the game. We are going to be giving that item a texture and some potential uses as well. Adding a basic item to the game is one of the first steps of modding. You're going to need to create an item object. You're going to register it and then give it a texture. To add additional behavior to the item, you'll need a custom class, which we will also be going over in this series. One important note is that for all registries and declarations that we make here, I'm going to be using the tutorial mod ID. You are going to want to use your own ID. That is a very important distinction. If you end up accidentally putting in tutorial for any of your registered items, that may be the first area you'd like to look for if you're following this tutorial step by step. So we are going to start off in our main class. In yours, it may be called example mod class or whatever your mod name is. It is the main class which is inside your mod package. Let's make a little room here in the class. You're going to first initialize your item. We're going to use some basic Java knowledge here. In order to create a new variable, for example, an integer, you would use the identifier int and then the name of the variable you are trying to create. For this, we'll just call it new int and then you can set the value of it. This will not be very useful in modding, but this is basically how the declaration system works in Java. If you want to create a new variable with this name of type int or integer, you will declare it in this way and you will set it equal to whatever you'd like its value to be after that. Now we are actually going to be using not the int identifier, but the item identifier. And for this, we're going to have public static final item. Now, what does all this stuff mean? Final here makes sure that the value of your item will never change. Public static just means that this variable will be accessible from other classes without an instantiation. Now you are going to want to import the item class and then come up with the name of your item. We'll call this one new item. It's important not to have any spaces in your variable declarations or it will throw an error. You can use underscores or just no space at all. Now for this one, the value of our new item is going to be a new item. And here we are going to create the parameters of item new. We're going to use the fabric item settings method. And then as a part of that group, and then we'll set the item group to miscellaneous. In Java, or in our IDE, whenever you use a period or dot, it is going to access what is inside of this here. So if you were to look inside the class, I, and this isn't something you'll be doing, but if you were to look inside the class fabric item settings, you would find all of these methods. And in order to use them, you'll need the accessor period. Now, after we have declared our new item, we are going to register it using the default Minecraft registry. To register your item, you're going to want to go to registry, register, and then the registry type, which is an item, so registry dot item, and then new identifier. This is where you use your mod ID. The name of your mod ID will be unique to your mod, but in mine, it is going to be tutorial mod. After that, you're going to want to create the name of your item, which in my case will be new item. Be aware that this is not going to be the same as your item variable. It's different, it is the name of your item, the registry name. Now my advice is to just make this the lowercase version of your variable name. After that, you'll close off the parentheses, and then after that, include your variable name, which is new item. And that is the same one that we have up here. This is the basic process for registering each item. You're going to need to do this for every item you make in the game, in the future, you can just take this, copy paste it, and then insert the name of your next item. Now we can start up the game and see if the item is there. You will find once you enter the game that in the proper tab you have assigned, your item is there. However, it has no rendering, no texture, and it doesn't really do anything. It doesn't look that pretty either. The next step here is going to be adding all of these things, adding a name, 
adding a texture, and adding rendering properties. For this, we are going to need to add two files to the assets folder here. Inside of your mod IDs folder, you are going to add a new directory called models. And then inside that, create another one. And we are going to call that item. The files in this folder are going to be in charge of rendering all of your items into the game. We're going to create a new file, name it the name of your item, in my case, new item, dot JSON, or JSON. Along with that, we're also going to need a texture. Create a new directory, call it textures, and then inside of that, another folder named item. Now here is where you pick out your texture. For that, you're going to need a PNG file. Name it the name of your item, in this case, new item, and then drag and drop it into the textures.item location. You can open it in Explorer, and then use paint.net to edit the texture. I'll create a cobalt ingot. The standard image size is 16 by 16. While you can make textures that are larger than that, the rendering is a little goofy, and it often creates some unintended effects. We can experiment with that in a future video. There you have it, our finished texture. You can save that with this, and now we are ready to edit our JSON file. Open it up, and inside you're going to want to follow this convention exactly. Go quotes parent colon item slash generated. Comma textures layer zero. Tutorial mod, which is our mod ID, colon, item, slash, new, item. Now, for this, of course, your mod ID, in my case, tutorial mod, is going to be your mod ID, and this is going to be your specific item. One interesting tidbit is that the item generated can also be changed to item handheld. And this is for the rendering of tools, swords, other things like that used items. But in our case, we are making an ingot, so we are going to just use the generated. You can now restart the client. Now our item has a texture, and an interesting one at that, but it still lacks a name. Let's fix that. Inside your mod IDs directory, create another folder called lang. Inside that is going to be the definition for all of your named items, blocks, and other word-related stuff that you're going to be creating. You're going to want to create another JSON file called nus.json. This is one thing that differs from 1.12 modding versus 1.16 modding. In 1.16.5, you use a JSON file in order to name all of your items as opposed to the old version, which is an nus.lang file. In order to do this, you're going to create two curly brackets, go ahead and open quotes, go to item.yourModID, and then your item, which in our case is new item. After the quotes, add a colon, make more quotes, and then add the desired name of your item. In my case, it will be cobalt ingot. That is it for naming the item. You can go ahead and run the client and test to see if it worked. If you have any questions about the lang file, go ahead and drop a comment down below and I'll make a video specifically about using lang. And there is the item name, cobalt ingot, and you are done making your first item. Congratulations.
That's it for this video. The next video will go over adding additional functionality to your item using colored text and adding item subscripts. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you'd like to see more of these videos. That's all for today. This has been Markora, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.